Hi and welcome to my playhouse and today um, we're gonna play with this because um, I was looking at Lenovo Transform 2.0 that's a yearly event that they have where they promote themselves it's like every other big company has this like Cisco has it, HP has it, IBM has it, all of them has it like they um, have a big venue and they have their partners there and they show a lot of stuff there is keynotes and there are speeches and there is well breakout sessions and you can go and and learn new stuff um i didn't go i wasn't invited they forgot to they probably didn't forget anything but i was watching it online they had a live stream they even had a chat so uh, i did also try to post that on facebook and on twitter that i was hanging out there but I didn't see anyone. No one came. What were you doing? They announced, Lenovo will announce, strategic partnership with NetApp. It's kind of funny because that is a Lenovo server and this is two NetApp storage boxes. So I'm ahead of my time. So I thought that maybe I should actually try and play a little bit with this today. They are way outdated compared to what Lenovo and NetApp is um, is offering right now. But well, I just thought that it was fun that that's actually what I've been playing with Lenovo and NetApps. My idea is that we installed Windows Server from this last time we was playing with it. We did some um, storage spaces and and stuff. I'm not going to be needing that. That was just testing. Um, I wanted. Today I wanted to try and actually set this up like a VMware storage server-ish. The idea is this Lenovo X3650 model, that's the Lenovo X3550 model 4, which is a 1U server. It has a couple of pretty good CPUs in there, so just managing this amount of storage here, the processors are way too good to do that. So it would be nice to set this up so that the server could be a host and manage this storage so um, that's the idea anyway so yeah we better go and turn it on the cables uh, back here that's a mess i don't i don't plan on having this on for a long while so we're not gonna fix that so power on the server where did that one that did not power on did it Uh, now it did hmm. and we're gonna power on the storage boxes um, I have only power supplies on uh, half the power it's just to save power there we are yep powering up also there's two controllers in each of these storage boxes. I'm only using one of them. The other one I've popped out so that it doesn't interfere. So it's been a while since we missed with this, so I forget which drives we have in here. Oh, we have a Samsung 500 gigabyte Evo drive. That's apparently the boot drive, or it, it was. What is this? Normal 500 gigabytes spinning disk okay 146 and another 146 gigabyte drive okay so well I don't really have to do anything before I have installed VMware oh I guess I have a have a key there. Wonder what I have on that. Hmm. Okay. So we have all these drives. They're just going to be presented inside VMware. I hope. Let's put in a bootable USB with the latest version of VMware and see if this will power up. There we are. ESXi 6.7 Lenovo custom image. So let's put that in. There. Uh, oh, that's the bad one. Let's put it in over there so you can see me power on the server. There. Uh, 
and we are booting and I'm gonna be pressing F12 to uh, boot from the USB stick at any point. And we, we're just gonna be installing VMware on that first hard drive, the SSD. We can press F12 already. Okay, here we are. Let's see, we have a USB 3 on the front. That sounds about right. Don't go get it. There we are. The VMware ESXi installation is popping up. And um, this is more or less just next, 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 whatever. Um, so I'm. Um, I'm gonna install that and uh, let's see it when it's done installing except if something interesting pops up this is a little bit interesting um, <laughs> look at the amount of different drives that I can select to install VMware on uh, <laughs> that's uh, quite a bit I hear some ticking from a drive down there so I probably have one that is not that great so unfortunate so i have two 500 gigabyte drives here which one is the ssd f1 gathering additional information from the selected device this will take a few moments Let's see. Minter, i oh that's the rate controller hello is there any more Let's see that one. SSD device false. Did the other one also say that? Yeah, it's not recognized as an SSD. Let's see. It's target ID 1. Let's see the other one. Target ID 2. So I'm guessing it's probably target ID number one. That's this. We're gonna try that. Pick that one. Okay. Everything on the disk will be deleted. Yes. Okay, I ran into a little bit of a problem. These two drives, which is a RAID 0, they wanted to boot all the time. So I popped those out and booted from the, the SSD right there. And that took me a bit of time to figure that out. That is irritating. But now it's booted. So here is the server. Newest ESXi version installed. RAM 128 gigs. There's two Intel Xeon E5 2670, 2.6 GHz. We're gonna go in and configure some networks on this thing. So we'll have to press F2. And I'll have to put in a password for this. There, let's see what we get. Configure management network. That's about, that's what we want. So we have different network cards. We have a NIC zero, probably fine for now. This one has actually a couple of 10 gigs network cards down here somewhere. Yeah, there's quite a lot. And on this server, I took these 10 gigabit network cards and I split them up into four. So um, there is that. Also four internal one gigabit connections. Ooh, that's a lot of network uh, ports. So, but this one is connected, so that's good. So, okay, cool. Go back. VLAN options. We don't have to set that right now. We have to go and put in an IP number in here. Set a static. 230. The rest is okay. IP version 6. I'm gonna disable that. DNS configuration. Yeah, it's getting that from the DHTP server. That's marvelous. Okay. Yeah, I can give the server a DNS name. M. I'll do that. That's fine for what I'm gonna be playing with here. So let's go back out. Do you wanna apply settings and reboot? Yes. yes. 
and it's booting. So, okay. Okay, let's see if we have a connection to the server out there. Um, and I gave it the IP number. That I want. Something is replying, so I'm guessing that we have a connection to the server. Uh, the VMware host out there, ESXi, and root. Logging in and my password. Login. I haven't been on this for uh, this 6.7 yet, so this is the first time I see this as well. So we get something that we can join, join the VMware Customer Experience Improvement Program. Yeah, it's gonna send all the good information back to VMware. We have a trial version running here. So we have 60 days to play with this. Awesome. And you are running Lenovo Customized Image. That's nice to know. Thank you very much. The, the certification assigned to the host is not valid yet. You should install a valid certification. Mm. Okay. We're not gonna mess with that. We're gonna do some storage and see what we have there. If we can see all those drives we have out there. Storage. Okay, we have one storage device and uh, that's is that the ssd i think it's a it's the ssd or it's the can we see it can we can we browse data store nothing on it okay so that's probably the ssd let's see what we can we go to the store can we then add a new data store Create new VMFS data store. That's probably gonna be it. Add an extension to existing data store or expand an existing. Nice to know. Mount an NFS data store. Okay, we're probably gonna need to create a new one now up here. So next, we should have a lot of drives available if we're lucky. I have the fire on. Um, no device. So apparently, unfortunately, VMware does not see my rig controller. Ugh. Okay, in here under host management, I have found that um, there are two rig controllers. There's this one and there is this one. So I'm guessing that the Mega Raid, IBM likes to call it Mega Raid. So that's probably the one that we are running on. It's a guess. Okay, it's the next day, and I'm a bit confused because this is this doesn't make any sense. As soon as I try to pass through one of those. Oh, I probably didn't explain that. There is two RAID controllers in this server. There is one RAID controller that is for the, the four disks in the front of the server. And there's another RAID controller that controls the two storage boxes beneath it. Um, as soon as I pass through either one of those two RAID controllers, both of them, well, the built-in storage just disappears. So it might be that those two RAID controllers are using the same driver or something. Um, might be it. I also thought that it might be because that the driver was not in the new version of ESXi 6.7. Uh, I have heard something about it not being as compatible with old RAID controllers and old network cards. So I went hunting for that and let's just see what I found. Here we are in the pass through window. Uh, we can see that I have passed. I haven't pa I've passed through the graphics card. I haven't passed through this one. Uh, but I have passed through this one. Um, and it doesn't work to toggle it off. It does not care about that. 
just cost me a reboot so I have to reinstall it to uh, not be actively able to pass this through Bugger. okay uh, I found that it's actually this card that I am running it's the 9207-8i uh, apparently that's a bill brand by now um, they keep buying each other and but it says over here that it's a VMware inbox native driver so it should be in the ESXi 6.7 might be probably is but as I have installed the Lenovo version that might be cheating me maybe Lenovo has got rid of that driver even oh, don't see why they should do that um, it does show up in the installation as a drive that I could install uh, VMware on but well in here it, it really doesn't pop up as anything and this uh, passing through uh, well turns out to be a bit buggy so I think I should go and try and install the native version of VMware on, on the Lenovo server and if we scroll through this it's not as if there is a lot of Lenovo uh, packages on here uh, I did find one there something that is called Lenovo it might be other packages with other names that are also Lenovo uh, specific oh there is one more there IMM pass-through provided for ESXi okay interesting let's try that um, install the native version let's see there is 138 items in the driver package here with the Lenovo one Let's see what the native one will give us. So I have loaded another USB stick here, which has the VMware ESXi 6.7, uh, but the standard VMware one, not the Lenovo one. So we're gonna try and install that. Um, all of these companies, right above it, we have an HP server. They also have their own ISO files for installing ESXi these old servers are not really compatible with the newer versions of ESXi or they are not supported so it might be that the image files that Lenovo and HP and Dell and Cisco and all the large brands does not have these old drivers for these old machines anymore so they probably only have drivers for the machines which is actually supported in the compatibility list it's not as if all these drives doesn't pop up in the installation uh, here they are all the drives that I want to see are actually there, but well they um, When I get into VMware well they disappear. So uh, I have a bit of a Issue there Okay, the ESXi 6.7 has been installed the regular VMware version and we have the chance to join the VMware customer experience experience improvement program again Yes, sure. <laughs> Hope they're getting tired of that. So now uh, we get one storage, and that's the the SSD that we have installed this on. Awesome. Let's see new storage. Do we have anything next? Come on, a lot of drives, please. Nothing. Okay, so probably this is uh, not working as I had hoped. Let's see, we have 136 items in here. So actually with the Lenovo install, we get two additional packages. Nothing popped up when I tried to add a data store here. New data store. Um, I forgot to show these up here. So there, it's CSD adapters. This one is the regular SATA controller on the system board, I'm guessing. And then there is two controllers, and I still don't really know which is which. Uh, do we get any information? We get the driver that it's on. That one. Let's go back and see the other one. That one. Oh, it is actually on another driver. Mega Raid SAS driver. My best guess would be that that is the Lenovo M1115 that is in there. 
back to here. We have adapters, but then we have devices. And it does actually see a lot of drives here. I mean, it all the 1.8 gigabytes are normal, but it sees a lot of drives. So somehow it has the drives, but it's not using them. So can we make a new data store from in here? Oh, name test. I have no idea what we're gonna find. Test. Next. Select devices. None. Come on, you have all those devices out there. Why don't you find them? The following device. Blah, 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 blah. Free space. Next. Oh, I have to select something, but I can't. What do we have options here if we press one of these? We get the device. This is an unknown petition. Do we need to format all of these or do something? Edit partition, clear partition table. We could do that. Oh, there is <coughs> 48 drives to do that on. But uh, edit partition, what can we do here? It sees a lot of stuff. Cancel, let's cancel. Let's just clear partition table. Clear. Yes. There. Then we have a drive there. Can we then add a partition maybe? Will this pop up? Reveal yes. It does! Okay, so I just have to clear the partition of those 48 drives and then I can do this. Holy moly! I'm so stupid. If you think I'm stupid, um, hit the like button. That makes me smart. But, no, whatever. I will do that and we will be back. Oh, for crying out loud. Holy moly! That was so much fun! removing the partition table of those 48 drives. Whee! It was so fun that I almost did it on the SSD drive here. Um, that would have been so much more fun because I would have had to install ESXi once again. But uh, I saved myself from that embarrassment. It does have a lot of filing systems here, so it could probably have been a good idea to uh, to delete that partition table and start over. Uh, probably there is some Windows crap among here. Um, I don't know. But let's see what possibilities this opens up for us when we go to uh, our storage here. So we have a lot of drives and I've actually counted them. I knew how many there were supposed to be but well sometimes you lose a drive and the uh, NetApp uh, storage boxes out there are not really that good at telling me that oh this drive is dead. You kind of need an operating system to do that. So yeah, there is uh, 24 drives of 600 gigabytes and there are 24 drives of two terabytes. So what can we do? Make new data store. That's a great idea. Let's let's try the temp here we can rename it later um, it's just a name and we have free space after okay so we have selected one drive oh, what do we have here select partition options okay so that is for one drive okay so maybe that's not what we want. Maybe we want to go to data store here instead. And then make a new drive. Can we? Yeah. Then we have more options here. Create VMFS data store. Next. And we get all the drives. Awesome. Uh, that's a, yeah. 48. Nice. Can I then just select all of them? We can give it a name test. Let's select all the smaller ones. Yeah. So how would I do that? Am I not able to do a cluster thing here? Make it into something bigger? Does it only take individual drives? That's a lot of individual drives. Not exactly what I had in mind. Okay, I found a way to do this, I think. So, um, it just seems stupid. If I pick a drive, 
So let's just go to data store here and we will create a new data store. Create new data store. Next, it will look at all of our drives. Boom, boom, boom. There we are, a lot of drives. So if we start with the smaller drives, I'll just take the top one here and give it a name. Test. Test. Next. Uh, use the full drive. Yes, we're gonna do that. Use the latest and the greatest. Yes. Next. That's how it's gonna look. Finish. Not a lot of options here. Using the entire content. Yes. And it will create a data store for us. There we are. Test is there. It is consists of just that one drive. Then we can go and increase capacity, add drives to it. We can do that here. Top one, next. And it will give us the list of drives. So if we pick the next one here, I think it's okay. It will show us the, the drive. Uh, this is confusing. Next, and finish. Uh, we're about to do something stupid. Yeah, we are aware of that. There, it has been extended. So if we go in here and look, we can now see that we have a one terabyte drive instead of the 500 and something gigabyte drive. Let's do that again. Because we have nothing better to do in life. So now we should see 1.5 terabytes. Estimated guess. 1.6 something terabytes. There is a long way to go with all of those drives. And what about the security on this drive? Do we have any options of making redundancy or anything? Uh, it really looks like they have removed some of the storage solutions for the VMware ESX i 6.7 that we were used to having in the 6.5 and some of the versions before that. So I might have to go and install a previous version of ESX i on this server. Um, if I want to do some of the smart storaging on here, have some of the software RAID features and cooling and stuff like that so well I might also just be an idiot and not able to find where they put it uh, maybe I have to put it in vCenter I wanted to see what was available right out of the free box so maybe the free box is just not as well equipped it looked like I am able to do a very big drive just adding those drives on top of each other but well the security is not there as far as I can see so um, yeah, thank you very much for watching my video. Please give it a like, even though it's not that likable. Yeah, have a nice day. Bye-bye.